All right, we hey are there. back. How we doing? Back on the happy. We don't have a fancy opening like we did last week. The two faces for radio coming at you right now. We are here. Brand hey. new week. Um, I mean, all wow. All kinds of stuff going it's on. Beautiful huh? outside. Busy. Uh, I'm a little, I'm a little tired to be honest with you. Oh yeah, I mean, things. This is a is we're back to the anything can happen at any hour of the night or day in real estate. Things you know happen. What I mean? Things happen quickly, don't they? Absolutely, and um, and quite frankly, I have not seen this crazy of a market in a very very long time. Uh, really, get... seven. Mark Gelman, the pride of St. Louis, is here with us. Mark Carlisle's Mark, on. Good to see you. Well, I tell you, I mean, it is nuts, and we got a lot to talk about. Uh, hey, just got out with one of uh, Birmingham's finest, Jesse Adams. He told me to give him a shout out. So, there Jesse, you go, Jesse, uh, doing the Lord's work, uh, taking the bad guys off the street. That's right. He's a he's a police officer, uh, Shelby County, uh, Jefferson, uh, Jefferson County uh, Sheriff. Department. Yeah, Sheriff's Department, good guy, yeah. and. Uh, you know, we're going to get into some uh, personal finance stuff. We're going to talk about, obviously, real estate, uh, as we always do. And, you know, one thing we I, I get asked a lot, you know, because everybody knows I'm a big podcast guy. And so I thought, hey, we finally were having some questions from our listeners, if you will, or Facebook followers. and Or viewers. Viewers, I guess you'd say. And they were asking about which podcast do I listen to on a daily basis. I don't know. You started listening. And so I wanted to share those with everybody. Yeah. And then also tell you the best podcast apps. One, the best podcast app out there is Overcast. You can get it uh, in the App Store. Obviously, you can use Apple's podcast apps. But Michael Bruno, what's happening? Yes. Lisa True, the pride of South Florida. Anyway, Michael Bruno is the pride of Mortgage Bank. Mortgage Bank. That's what he is. He is that. Uh, but let's talk about uh, the four shows that I listen to. Barkley Russell's on. Thank you for coming in. The four folks, uh, the four shows that I listen to every yeah. day, the, the the Clark Howard Show, okay, Stacking Benjamins. Stacking hey, you, you get Benjamins. it, don't you? Stacking yeah. the hey, stacking, stacking the Benjamins. Hundreds. They can throw them. Uh, but he also has uh, uh, Joe Saul Seahigh is the guy that runs that, and he has Money in the Morning, which is also good, and uh, which is him. But in a fifteen minutes, I listen to that first thing because it's fifteen of two or three of the best stories of the day in the financial markets and that sort of thing, but as it relates to you personally, okay. personal finance. Uh, the Afford Anything podcast, if you're going through a, uh, it, this lady just breaks down personal finance and makes it easy to understand. And uh, so Afford Anything podcast, and the one that a lot of you may have heard, because it's the number one uh, on Apple, which is the Bigger Pockets podcast. Okay. Uh, a good one. I think especially uh, you can really hear... Because folks are so freely given on these type shows, uh, these podcasts, because a lot of them are started by real people with real jobs, yeah. not some journalists who got into financial news yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of good information. I know the Clark Howard show is is a lot of great stuff with personal finance and all kinds of things. He uh, originally started in Atlanta years ago, I think 87, he said. Absolutely. Um, and so he's been doing it for a long time. And, and he lives what he preaches, by the way. Yeah, and he, you know, <laughs> yeah. it kind of reminds me of the fox on your side. You know how, how they go out and our local investi affiliate. You know, investigate uh, things that are going wrong. I think that's where he kind of cut his teeth was was getting involved in some of those consumer uh, uh, protections and, and and really diving in and making companies and other people accountable for stories that consumers are going through problems and stuff. Absolutely, like that. and so you learn something in every episode. I mean, he I think they run about thirty nine minutes. Great, listen to it at the gym too. Uh, Ralph, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, hey, big news: Netflix. Can you believe? That Netflix is about to overtake Disney in market cap. What you know, you can explain a little bit about what market cap. Makes. Market cap is just basically the shares outstanding for a stock multiplied times the, uh, the the share price. Now, obviously, that tells you a lot about the company because that means that Wall Street's putting dollars into this company to get the share to that value. And then you've got you know di you know big cap, mid cap, large. I mean, large cap, small cap, mid cap stocks and and you know, a lot of uh, different things that, that investors look at. Um, so so when you overtake a company like Disney, who who is very diversified in, <laughs> you know, they own ESPN, they have the amusement parks, they've got... Uh, now Fox TV. Yeah, they've got all kinds of uh, Portions shows, of it. movies, obviously. Um, so Disney... Uh, I mean, we know Disney. I mean, yeah. we've all experienced Disney's Disney. Huge. And the fact that this, this, what we remember, many of us remember as a CD or DVD 
DVD by company, mail. Yeah, yeah. Company is now. I mean, let's look at the numbers real quick. One hundred and forty-six. It's worth. Let's just put it in simple terms. We're going to tell you when we say market cap what it's worth. What it's worth to the investment community. Right. One hundred and forty-six billion dollars versus Disney's one hundred and fifty-three billion dollars. I mean, heck, David, the stock up seventy-five percent this year alone. I mean, and, and the wow. funny thing is with. Uh, with Netflix, I remember when they had their first price increase years ago. However many years ago that was. Six to like $8? Yeah, yeah. the first price increase. And I, I got the, because I was a Netflix subscriber, and I got the letter in the mail said we're going up. And I was like, oh, this is stupid. These guys Won't happen, these right? guys are dumb. I mean, they're going to lose so much business. Uh-oh. Shows you what I know. Well, you were an early investor, too, in but the, Netflix, but right? But then even with their online content at first, I was like, man, there's nothing really here to watch. It was like. The best thing I found was some old <laughs> so Scooby Doo commercials, Still. old Scooby Doo cartoons. Right, that was the well, best thing they had on there. But now they've got their own content. Right, they've got their own shows. They've got their own uh, movies that they're working on, and obviously they are a one of the original disruptors. Uh, uh, and that has lasted. I mean, you know, and you look at. I mean, Disney even they own thirty percent of Hulu. I mean, so. And why this is fascinating is I don't think any of it, I think we kind of have all looked up and gone, they're a behemoth now. And you know what I really think? I think they're going to become the G. They're going to become a stock that everybody's going to want in their portfolio long term. I'm not so sure you enter the Netflix now because we're at all time highs with them. But I think for the next 20 years, not a bad investment. Well, the thing is, I think I think the big thing that you're seeing with companies and stocks right now are who is able to uh, maneuver and change and grow. I mean, look at Amazon. They started off as a bookstore, right, or selling books online. Selling books online. And now yeah. they do everything. Well, look at Netflix. They, they started off with DVDs. Now they're producing content. Now they have, uh, they're, they're paying actors, and they have shows. Their own shows. You know, just like uh, just like the shows that you, you watch regularly on, on the, the, the major TV. networks. Yeah. I mean, now they're coming out with their own stuff. So they're evolving, and they are staying current, and they are adding new content, and they're doing new things, I guess, is... Well, and I I'm think saying. you and I talked about it earlier. We all in our own businesses have got to take the kind of the approach Netflix took and adapted to what they were given. They didn't sit there and fight it like Blockbuster Video did. Blockbuster tried to do what Netflix did, but they did it too late yeah. in, the, in the game. But Netflix is staying relevant. Now they're big enough to, to throw some money at some ideas and, and, hey. and do things with it. Well, I, you're right. I mean, because they can they can make mistakes, which is the hard part. But man, right? some of the stuff you got listed here: the Disney World, the uh, talking about what Disney lines, owns, Muppets, Star Wars, Any Network, Marvel um, Comics. You know all these Disney products, and and you've got Netflix that w was just a blockbuster competitor at first. They were just the little red box by the gas station, right? Well, red box. Yeah. Well, they were like red box. The, yeah. 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 Well, no, I don't even. Does anybody really go to red box anymore? I doubt it. I don't think so. I, I never see them like I used yeah, to. Right. I mean, they went up on price, which mistake number one, because that was the reason I was going to. Well, you. I thought Netflix you made moron. a mistake going up on price. Ruby, but. how you doing? All the way from the Philippines. Ruby, hope you're doing well. Tyler Young, hope you're doing well, buddy. Thanks we are, we are international, man. Yeah, yeah. We are international. Rick Ross uh, is watching us. All right, so what, what else we got? Um, Talk, well, this man. is the main topic related to real estate. You know, uh, this is just, I just want to talk about this this week because we've got a couple of situations right now where people, um, because of the market, how tight it is, obviously inventory is low. We've got more buyers than we have sellers. and By far. Right. So, so just in our business right now, we've got um, somebody that just went under contract. They're closing May the, May the 7th because their house is selling May the 7th. So for the past week or so, week to 10 days, they've been a little bit nervous with their house under contract. Knowing that they didn't want to have that interim time where they had to move into something else, they had to move their stuff two or three times, and then get and then settle on a house. So they want to have everything happen the same day. Right. So what's happening are people people are getting their house sold. They're putting their house on the market. They're getting a contract for sale, mm -hmm. and then they've got that time window hmm. to get out Correct. and find Five. something. If and they, they have it, and they're going no. out into a market where there's not a huge selection. So that's got to create a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. Absolutely, and we're seeing it every single day. And that's why the best thing if you're a seller now is to have your agent negotiate a longer window, 45 days, something like that that buys about 15 minutes. I mean, 15 minutes. Wouldn't that be great? Well, that would be, well, be awful. Yeah, you have 15 yeah. minutes to make a decision. 
No, about 15 days. 45 days of a 30-day closing window, that gives about really good assurances that we can find something. Because right now, you do have to wait. You have to wait until you are under contract before you can even remotely go looking for that and, house. And I think that's it's another good reason right now in this market to um, <laughs> Darren James to get hooked up with a real estate agent, get hooked up with a mortgage lender, figure out what you're doing because you could get out there early, right, and, and write a, con a we can contingent. write we can write a contingent contract, but that's really not smart because you're not going to win. Okay, no one's going to see. We're even finding it hard right now for folks that are writing contingent upon the closing, a successful closing. We're past inspection. We're past everything. But it still must be contingent on um, on the closing. And folks aren't going to take that chance. If they have a similar offer, that same price, Yeah, they're not going to take the chance. Why so, worry about it? So if you're selling a house in this market, I would say you, you need to get pre-qualified. You need to get pre-approved. Get your docs turned into the lender. Have all of that sitting there waiting. So once your house goes under contract, you're not scrambling around. Going down to the loan officer and meeting with him and then talking about stuff, figuring out rates are 4.75. What? You know, I didn't know that. And then my closing costs, and where's that going to come from? Hey, where's and it going? I, well, I'm not sure how much I'm going to net. Well, what if I don't net as much? You know, all these questions can be figured out before we get into the time crunch. So then all you got to do is focus on finding a house, writing a contract, and then the mortgage pieces, it moves really smoothly. David, that makes too much sense, really. Uh, I mean, what we got to really do is game plan from start to finish. Soup to nuts, right? Uh, where we say, okay, here's what we're going to need out of this house. It may be 100%, I mean, maybe $100,000, it may be 20000 But what must I have out of this house? Why is that important? Because when the offers are rolling in, we're not asking questions about, because you're going to start thinking at that point, oh my gosh, I got to have X amount, or what do I have to have? In my new house. Oh my gosh, I got to call the lender. Well, no, you've done that already. Yeah. And take we're ready some, yeah. to go. Take some time to trust the professionals uh, so you don't have to remember all these things. Don't do it on your own. I mean, you're not going to save any money doing it on your own because you're going to stress yourself out. You're going to miss something. Absolutely. And then by then it's too late, right? Way too late. And, and I think when we're under stress, we make bad decisions. Yeah, and I want to... I wanna, reiterate that an average the average process i mean typically we allow about 30 days right yeah, for, for the closing process from application to close we can get it done in two weeks three weeks there there's a couple things that have to happen on the front end as far as the home inspection the appraisal those are two big things up front Absolutely. that we need to get rolling get out of the way so uh we can move on with the process but but really two to three weeks is is still very doable well, absolutely. Well, two to three weeks, absolutely. But you got to have make sure you're keeping in very tight communication with the lender. I'm yeah. speaking from the real estate side, saying because there's things that they have to do from underwriting standpoint that is time sensitive. And so as a consumer, you need to make sure you're putting pressure on your agent. Have you talked to my lender? Because I can't tell you how many deals have been pushed out Yes. because of that issue. And that's where we get back into those uh, rocket style mortgage companies, uh, where that communication piece can break down. Yeah, the communication piece isn't there, and that's that's what happens when you when you do handle some of the stuff up front when you're selling your house. You get it listed before you get that contract before it's sold. Your loan officers already looked at documents. Absolutely, they've already asked the questions. We've already played out scenarios. What if you don't net fifty thousand? What if you only net thirty thousand? What are we going to do then? So we've already figured all these things out. We're not scrambling around. Highly emotional. Stressful. Absolutely. And really, here's the thing. Very, I think very smooth, a lot smoother. And I think one of the problems that we found is that, you know, one of the things that I've always liked about you is that you analyze everything. And that, this is not about us necessarily. But one of the things I've seen about you is you analyze everything. And part of the problem with consumers today is they get so enamored with, oh, it looks beautiful and I want the house. I don't care what it costs. But now we really got to focus on this stuff that really is dollars and cents down the road. And the problem is folks need to value that when they're looking for a lender, right? They need to value, are they giving me two and three options? Because I don't care what lender it is out there. There are two to three options every time. Man, and you've got to make... Hey, Brittany. You got to... This is a financial decision. You got to make good decisions in life, right? And I know there are a lot of uh, somewhat misleading statements in the mortgage business. Where and, and a lot of people are just focused on interest rate, but sometimes that lowest rate is not 
Hey, hold on the just a second. Way to do hey, it. Brittany, will you text me your cell number? Because I, I don't have your cell number anymore. I was going to text you something the other day. Anyway, this is a great way. I can't talk to her any other way because I forgot her cell phone. All right, Brittany, get us that number. Not here. You can not, not hit there. my cell. So uh, I just think that, you know, it, look, interest rates come from the same place, Wall Street, right? Everybody's looking at the different, at, at the same money, at the same rates. Absolutely. Now, there, are, there might be different margins from company to company. There may be different, uh, slightly different rates from day to day. But you're usually pretty close within an eighth. Uh, I mean, everybody's playing the Generally same. Generally the same. Everybody's playing the same game. They're within the same guidelines. Yeah. So, you know, the big thing comes into, to, you know, how much time you spend figuring out what's important to you about the mortgage. Absolutely. And looking at the fees. Hey, Christy. Man, I, I, I can't tell you how many people know what they're know what rate they were quoted from another company, but they have no idea what the closing costs are. Right. So it's just, a, it's just a big deal. There's Sarah Adams. We, we already <laughs> mentioned Jesse. <laughs> Jesse so, made the front page of the... Uh, front page. Front page, start of the hour. But anyway, all right. So, But, but that is so important that the lender have a game plan. And if, if, if your lender can't tell you what are the two and three options within whatever I'm buying, whether because see, I look at options like... I am going to have to pay PMI. Okay, great. Now there are two options within yeah, how that. How do we do that? How do we how do we want to set that up? How do you want uh, like lender what does paid PMI? What does it matter if right? I do lender paid or monthly? Why You'll, would I do one over the other? What's the break even yeah, point? Yeah, so let's figure that out. You know, I tell everybody by the time you figure out you're with the wrong lender, it's too late. I had a guy call me on Monday, That's working right. with a different lender. He was PO'd, but there's nothing I could do. He closed this week. There's nothing I could do about it at that point. He's, he's got to stay where he's at. He's got to play the course and deal with what he's got because you can't just all of a sudden stop and start over, right? No, and by the time you're – it's too late. Yeah. Because I've always said that it's the total cost of the loan that matters, right? So when you're looking at what – it used to be the good faith estimate. What do you all call it now? Closing disclosure. Closing disclosure. Or loan estimate. Loan estimate. Well, it, was, it was too confusing when we said good faith estimate, I guess. Uh and that's why your documents now went, y'all, everybody's package went from like, you know, package meaning loan package, just yeah. so you know, um, from here to here, you know what I mean? And yeah, a lot more documents. I mean, just, they have to tell you what they done told you. Right. So, anyway. so, so that's, that's all about making a good financial decision. Now we're going to transfer into some poor financial decisions. <laughs> okay. I was, I was with, at dinner with somebody last night. They mentioned a story on NPR about payday loans. If you guys don't know what these are, payday loans is typically a short-term cash loan. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know or understand a whole lot about the reason people get them, but I know obviously a lot of people might live paycheck to paycheck. Okay, so Absolutely. let's say your car breaks down. I think a lot of people do let, right let, now. Let's say you, you need four or five hundred bucks. These payday loans are designed to be less than five hundred dollars, so you can walk in and get cash, and then you authorize a check or a debit in two weeks, or, you, you, you know, they pre-write a check. Yeah, they're from 10 to 30 days, and so you get the cash, and you pay the interest. Absolutely. Now, the unbelievable thing about these is that I was researching some companies. The average, I think, APR total cost about of the one. 456%. <laughs> 456%. <laughs> your, your annual percentage rate, 456%. Now what a deal for them. They said that, that, that an average of eight. Per year, per person. So Look, I'm a capitalist, but these companies should be they, ashamed they of themselves. They are really ripping people off. They're, they're, they should be ashamed of themselves. Now, the funny thing is, is they but nothing just, I can do about it. They all, just tried to put in some uh, regulations, legislation. some legislation to limit the number that they could extend to people, as well as uh, more analysis on the ability to repay. Well, and why, where are they located? When I see them, they're located near the people that are least needy. I mean, they, well, they're needy of it, but they, they can least afford to pay. Well, first of all, let's start off. None of us can pay 450%. It doesn't make sense. I mean, I, have, I was on CashNet USA. A 10-day loan was 639%. <laughs> and they're APR. advertising it? They, they, well, they have to. They have to put the numbers out there. <laughs> you know, so basically what you're doing is you're paying, let's say you're paying... 20% for 10 days. Well, if you divide that out, then you look at a daily interest rate. And if you do it by 365 days, that's how they're getting these big numbers. So I do agree. Uh, hey, somebody's making comment on yeah. our shirts. I do agree that the APR is, is tough to compare, but 
you know, you're still paying a ton of interest and it, it's just ripping people off. A lot of people are going in and if they don't, they can't afford to repay the loan, they, they get a new one. Oh, it's funny you say that. One of the stats I saw was that Pew Research, it was Pew Charitable Trust, actually, said that the average payday borrower takes out eight loans of $375 and spends $520 before they even pay the first note back. It's unbelievable. I, I looked on a few websites. Lendup.com, APR 458%. Speedycash.com, APR was 199.5. <laughs> now, this, that this is example, crazy. This, actually, this example I printed out, Speedy Cash was a $400 advance. The My finance God. charge was $269. Hold on, what was the original amount? $400. So $400, and they're going to pay $270 in fees? In fees, in interest. Huh. Over what time? So get that. Th this was over six months. So your total payment back is six hundred seventy dollars. You borrowed four hundred, and you're Stand. paying six hundred seventy back. That's one hundred and ninety nine point five percent APR. I mean, it's just it's it's it's, it's, a it's crazy and total ripoff. Now the funny thing is, is some of the politics involved in this is amazing. Mike Mulvaney, the guy, I think Mick Mulvaney. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, Mick Mulvaney, yep. the guy that just took over the CFPB, put these new regulations on hold. Why? Because. He has recently, or, or previously, during his uh, run into office, had donations from some of the payday <laughs> well, lenders to I, support his campaign. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm and shocked it, that it, a politician would. Uh, he also dropped. He should a be lawsuit. ashamed of himself with these guys. Though he dropped a lawsuit against a payday company charging 900 percent interest. I mean, this stuff is crazy. The the annual conference is going on right now. That's why it's a big oh, the deal. annual the conference. Annual conference for some of the the slime ball the heads lenders of the payday loans. Is being held at Trump National Doral Golf Club. How ironic is that? Well, hold on. I don't. Now Trump does it. Come Trump. on. Well, they may be supporting Trump because I think capitalists do. But, but I, I I'm, I'm against him, and I, I'm sure that the Trump National Doral will take anybody's money. I mean, oh, of course, of course. Um, so, so moving on. I mean, you know, we've got. Uh, you know, I looked at Advance America. They had a loan at four hundred fifty-six percent. So Cash, crazy. Cashcentral.com. Now, I did get on a little little side side note here. This was an installment loan. Okay, this will blow your mind. You borrow two thousand dollars, make twenty four payments of three hundred and ten dollars and eighty six cents a month. Do the math back. for me. That's a total of seven thousand four hundred sixty bucks. Of how much? You borrowed two thousand and you're paying back <laughs> seven thousand five hundred. If you know anybody doing payday lending, uh, or well, if you know them. Uh, they're making a kill. 180% APR. I mean, guys, it's just... Don't do it. It's just a ripoff. I know, and we're talking about it because we're hearing these stories of people. I mean, what, what's funny is I think sometimes that the economy is doing well. But for who, right? The stock market's doing really well. We aren't seeing quite the increase in salaries and in, in wages like we, we want to. Uh, I'm not saying to go to minimum wage but if increases. You're allowed, but, but if they're allowed to do things like this... This is obviously taking advantage of the people that, that can least afford it. That that can least afford it. It's like it. my thought exactly. on it's like my thought on casinos. Only in Alabama do we allow bingo, fake bingos that are supposed to be slot machines, right? But we, God forbid we allow blackjack. Uh, that's right. fifty fifty chance. Yeah. <laughs> or even a lottery. We won't let a lottery. Now, now I did want to add on this: the payday loans. I think I think uh, it was George Bush that signed. Law way back when that said uh, these are not allowed to go to military veterans. Like military veterans are not allowed to get. How are they going to know that? Though? I don't. I don't. Where know. are you going to go? Oh, you got a tattoo? I don't know. Of an but, anchor. Uh, and and also that they are outlawed in certain states: North Carolina, New York, Georgia, <laughs> Montana. Great, Look, great I'm state a, of Montana. I hate getting involved no in in between a capitalist and making money, but sometimes it's just awful. Uh. What Darren James say? I'm gonna ask to work for car to get a raise. I asked my boss here for a raise, and she and gave me a step ladder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his wife, um, Darren James. There's no doubt. Hey, you, you gotta step up. Darren probably doesn't even make a dollar. It all goes to mama. Uh, I know Darren well enough. Uh, he's he's the pride of Louisiana. You know, uh, Denham it. Springs. Denham Springs. Yep. He might know uh, Christy Solar. Do you know Christy Solar, Rachel Darren? Kelly's checking in. Anyway, we're going to move on. Play. We're going to move on from 
When she's um, not returning clothes for people? Go ahead. Who? Oh, Darren's wife? Or you, no, you got, Rachel. No. Darren's planning his big trips to Disney World. I mean, the guy is the most masculine man I've ever met. Used to guard the governor, right, a, of, of Louisiana. Oh, he does know and, Christy Solar. She is wonderful. Oh, he knows her. Oh, yeah. She is. She's one of my favorites. Let me tell you about Darren, though. Biggest Disney fan, and he's the most masculine man I know. I'm like, Darren, you know, uh, I don't like it like he does. But he's like, oh, man, you got to go now here. you have to flip over to Netflix, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. You got to go to Netflix now that they're taking over. All right, let's talk about one thing that uh, I get asked a lot, too, because everybody thinks I travel a lot, which I guess I do a little bit, just a hair bit. A little bit. Uh, yeah, about, you know... A lot of folks are asking, if you leave the country, what do we need to do about travel insurance? And this is a personal finance issue, right? Because it can severely impact us uh, relative to our finances if we get sick while we're in Mexico, Canada. See, folks don't understand that, that a lot of your insurance policies, most of them... Don't are cover have, you there. No, they're not going to cover you. And one of the best that things... Was, that was actually one thing he told me to do. We went on a cruise uh, last year, a couple years ago, and... Uh, Paid fifty bucks for a Geo Blue. Geo Blue, I'm Geo Blue, with... and uh, so that covered me. A million dollars. Didn't use it, but look, here's the thing, and I'm gonna tell you about. Uh, for instance, we're going to the Philippines this summer, uh, and we're gonna be spending well, Philippines, Singapore, and some other places. We're not. No, we're not. He is. Yeah, I am. Um, and as a family, uh, what one of the things that we're doing is we made sure for less than a hundred dollars. Less than a hundred, we have a million dollars worth of coverage for less. I mean, for uh, no deductible, and really, they'll cover anything. And they're direct payers too. They'll pay the hospital or whoever we have to go see directly, and they'll fly us out of there if we need to. You know, uh, the other thing is uh, the Chase South. Hey, Jennifer Castleman. <laughs> yeah, she's in. At, she's in the travel business. She knows. Yes. Um. Here's here's a copy. Good thing now you can't see the number anymore because it's on the back. But uh, the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card. It's why it's my favorite. It's ninety nine dollars a year. But what you won't believe is the amount of of trip insurance that the credit card gives you. There's no need to go out and buy a third policy. That's why you were able to buy just the health portion of that. And for ninety nine dollars a year, if there's trip. Uh, interruption and cancellation, and yeah. it covers you up to ten thousand dollars per trip. Yeah, and I tell you, this this is another thing we kind of touched on. I think last week uh, on the Clark Howard stuff was he, he was talking about some of the benefits of putting stuff on credit cards and uh, flights and, and specifically uh, vacations, cruises, things like that Absolutely. to protect some protections that are built in to credit cards that people don't even realize. Well, they say they say people, everybody out there. You, you know, a lot of folks are saying, oh, I don't want to pay $99 for a credit card I can get for free. Right, yeah, that annual but, fee. But trip delay reimbursement, if it's delayed more than 12 hours, they're going to pay, or an overnight stay. You know, you get stuck in, at Midway Airport and you don't have a thing, they're going to pay you $500 worth of your expenses, yeah. right, that you incur. The trip's canceled by sickness, severe weather, and other situations. Unlike the stipulations you have, these guys cannot afford to run a risk of losing customers. So they have pretty good... Um, policies in place, and everybody that I know that has made a claim, really good at getting it paid out. Um, yeah, that's good. So there's that, and also one of the best things about the Chase, Chase Sapphire Preferred is that when you rent a car and you use the credit card, they are the primary insurance on the car, meaning if there's an accident or something, you don't even have to even talk to your insurance. They'll take it. Yeah. They'll take it, and, and you don't have to worry about your rates increasing. And so you go $99, not a bad deal. So, Excellent. Excellent. There's that. So Geo That's Blue perfect. for help portion of travel. Yes. Chase, uh, Chase Sapphire. Sapphire preferred. Um, and there's some other reasons. And I mean, there's some other cards. Just so you know, in case anybody's interested in this stuff, uh, some of the other ones uh, besides the Chase card would be the City Prestige card that has the same thing, uh, Chase Inc. business, and then, of course, the Platinum card, which is a really good card uh, from American Express. There you go. So... And that's that's the rundown that's for this it. week. We're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to start some. Uh, well, we forgot up to tell you about what kind of beer we have. Yeah, it's a little Abita. That was a purple haze, uh, and that's then I it. had a strawberry. Strawberry. For, for oh, you he give me the girly the one. He likes the strawberry. What's up with that? But uh, but another beautiful week. Um, Absolutely. You know, the market is busy right now, so if you need any help with anything, give us a call. Look us up on Facebook. Uh, most of you know us all, already. Get, shoot us a message. 
Um, be, be happy to help you out and uh, got a bunch of bunch of likes coming in. So, well, thanks a lot. And you know what? We'll see you next Thursday, four o'clock. And hope you all have a great weekend and great start to next week. Yes. Thank you for tuning in. See you later. Bye-bye.